يا راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه نطور ادواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن وتعلم الفقه الميسر عاملا بالشرع دون تعصب لفلان بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ووالاه أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We'll talk today in this class about impure water We spoke about pure water Now we'll talk about impure water Why would we need to speak about impure water? Because this Impure water cannot be used to uplift minor or major ritual impurity, cannot be used to wash off impurities because anything it comes in contact with becomes nudges by itself. So this is spreading and contagious. Thirdly, we cannot use this to drink ourselves or use in cooking because this is nudges, impure. We have to stay far away from. So what is impure water? Impure water is any water that came in contact with an impurity that changed its smell, its color, or its taste. With what? with an impurity. So if I put some saffron in water and I drink it, the taste is different. But this is water still. And it is pure still because the substance that changed one of these three characteristics is pure. But if urine were to fall into this glass or bucket, if feces were to fall, if a dead animal such as a rat or a cat dies and drowns in such a container, if menses blood were to fall in, etc., that would render this water to be nudges. So how can, you, how can we purify such nudges water? Scholars say that there are means of purifying it. Number one, to add more pure water to this impure water until the whole container becomes pure and the characteristics of impurity vanishes. And this is known from the hadith where a nomad came and urinated in the masjid. Now we have, we have a problem. We have a spot that has an impurity in the ground. And you, you know that it's not carpets that was covering the floor of the masjid at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Rather, it was sand and pebbles. So the Prophet ordered them to overwhelm that with a bucket of water. Once it was overwhelmed by pure water, it became pure and they could pray on that spot. Another way of purification would be to leave that water until the impurity disappears by time. This happens when you leave the container for a long period of time and you come and find that there are no signs of impurity in it anymore. The third way or means of purification is through desalination. 
So when they do it with these new technologies and membranes and the likes that removes any impurity and restores the three characteristics of the water to its original form, then we uh, uh, judge this water to be pure and usable. Nowadays, this is done extensively with sewer water in order to utilize the scarce sources of water instead of dumping it in the oceans or disposing of it, they sort of recycle it, they chemically treat it so that they would remove any impurities and harmful substances and restore the water to its original nature where the taste, color, and smell is restored and it is uh, um, good. In this case, alhamdulillah, it becomes usable again. Now, how to judge? What do you mean? I have a water container. How to judge whether it's pure or impure? Well, we've stated this before and we'll state it once again. If an impurity falls into a water container and changes one of its three characteristics, then this water is impure. So I have a big tank of water and a dog or a cat f falls in and dies and drowns. And the rotten dead body changes the color of the water. Even if I remove the cat, the color has already been changed. The taste is stinky and the smell is awful. What changed these three characteristics? The answer is the dead cat, which is nudges. In this case, the whole container is nudges. It can't be used, period. Situation number two, what happens if I have a swimming pool and it's huge and a cat falls in and dies? I take the dead cat out and I look at the water and examine the water. I don't find any traces of smell, change of color or taste in the swimming pool because it's huge, it's big. The amount of water is a lot. In this case, this is pure 100%. Now, the problem is what happens if the impurity falls into a small container? And it's an issue of dispute. And the most authentic opinion is that we go back to the basics. The three characteristics, if they were not changed by an impurity, then the water remains by default to be pure. Because the Prophet said والسلام, in an authentic hadith, water is pure and nothing makes it impure. Unless, of course, one of the three characteristics has changed or was changed. And the change in the three characteristics is backed up by the consensus of scholars. They all agree from all different schools of thought. If one of the three characteristics has been changed by an impurity, they all agree. This water is impure. So this leads us, when we follow the Quran and Sunnah, to consider a jug of water where a drop of urine fell and we are in need of this water. In some areas, unfortunately, 
they are in need of a glass of water, either due to wars or due to famine and drought. So we don't have the luxury of throwing it away and disposing of it and get something else in its place. So what to do? Here we have to implement the rulings of fiqh that we are learning. We look at it. Three characteristics have not been changed by an impurity. We render it as pure and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. This is all the time we have. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he increases our knowledge in Islam so that we can know what is halal and what is haram. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Ya raghiban fi kulli ilmin nafi'in Yenmu al-almu wa yataqaddam Itaqaniyyatihi wa majalatah Wa ma'ahu mutawwiru adawatina Fi taqdim al-alm al-shara'i أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن وتعلم الفقه الميسر عاملا بالشرع دون تعصب لفلان بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان